concept of Halachmania. So as we now put in Lila Sede, we're going to sing a song of Halachmania. What is this concept of Halachmania? The Zohar Kadosh Rabotei says something which is incredible about the presence of the Shekhinah and the name of a Kadosh Baruch Hu feeding the Shekhinah. So the Zohar Kadosh says that there is a time, there is a state where the Shekhinah could be giving life and protecting Bnei Israel, but that protection, that Beracha, does not come from necessarily a good place. And I will explain. The name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Rabotai, as we know it, is built from the most part, and the last letter of at least the name of Pesach is the word He. As we know, Abotai, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as a nation, doesn't protect us, it doesn't bless us, it doesn't guide us directly. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created different vessels that He pours into those vessels, and from those vessels, he pours into us and protects us and blesses us. The big vessel and what we compare to our mother and HaKadosh Baruch to our father, we compare our mother to the Shekhinah and we compare our father to what? To the Zeher Alpin and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's main vessel of blessing us is through the Shekhinah where HaKadosh Baruch Hu blesses the Levona, which is for the most part, the main name that protects us as uh, Bnei Israel, and the Levona blesses us back. So it's like Avotai, we explain, it's like the sun and the moon. The sun is what creates the light. The sun shines the light on the moon, and the moon shines back the light to us, earth at night. The moon itself does not have any light to shine upon us, but only has light when? Only has light when the sun shines upon it. Now, even in that state, there are two states, two places where the Shekhinah can bless us. One state, which is what we call Lechem Oni, which is a food of a poor person, bread of a poor person. And another one is Shefa of Zechut, Shefa of Ichud Elyon. What's the difference between both of these things? So what's the concept, first of all, of Lechem Oni? The concept of Lechem Oni, if we translate the word Lechem Oni, Abitzvah, what does Lechem Oni translate to? The bread, of the, the, bread of the poor. What does the bread of the poor mean? The bread of the poor, it's bread that was given with no a, a, a act done previous to deserve it. So what does that mean? It's like the main analogy that even the word and the sentence comes from. A poor person, the poor person that sat on the street and he waited for food, he waited for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not working, he, he, he waited for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to bring him Yeshua, and somebody comes and gives him bread for no reason at all. That bread that he's going to eat, as good as it will taste, it's bread that he didn't uh, work for. It's bread that he didn't uh, 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 work to achieve. It was given to him for free. That bread never has good taste. Why? Because it was bread that came from a low place, came from a bad place. The Shekhinah has that state where sometimes it gives us blessing and pours on us Shefa, but like bread of poor person, in the sense that it gives us without us even working for it. And I'll explain what that means. And sometimes it blesses us, but in Shefa, in a, in a way of in it. We worked we caused some sort of job to be completed, and as a result, we were rewarded with bread, we were rewarded with money, we were rewarded with shefa, with blessing. So there are those two states. How do we earn the shefa from the Shekhinah? How can one go and achieve it, and for it to not be considered like lechem oni, like bread of the poor? Simple. When a person brings shefa from tata to dileva. When a person brings down Shefa from down here, up there to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, at that point when you, as an individual, pour light into the Shekhinah, when the Shekhinah pours it back into you, it can do it to be Shefa which is complete. Now what do you mean? Why do I have to give light to the Shekhinah for it to give back to me? So the concept is simple. When you do a certain mitzvah, essentially you are causing a reunite, uh, uh, a ichud, 
It's like a zivug. It's like a zivug. Zivug is when two aspects, different, they both offer two different things. They come together and they connect, they become one. We're not going to get too much into detail. That's an entire other teaching. Maybe we, 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 we can do it. It's, it's not for us right now. We'll, we'll, we'll say it like that. What is an ichud? It's a reuniting of two different forces, of two different uh, groups, that as a result of their, reuni of, of their uh, reunion, reunion. Uh, as a result of their reunion, a third entity comes uh, to reality. So an analogy that we can give, we can give like two different colors, you mix two different colors, you get a third color, or something that is more, that's, the Zohar compares it more to it, which we're not going to get into that. It's like a man and a woman. A man and a woman come together, as a result, they have a third party, which is their kid. It's the exact same concept. We're not going to, to get into to, to detail with that. But in any case, when we do mitzvot, when we do beracha, when we do a, a good deed, simplicity, we essentially create that reun reunion between HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the male figure, and between the Shekhinah, the mother figure. When that reunion comes to be, what happens? The Shekhinah, which is our mother, becomes rich, and as a result, has plenty of blessing to pour into us. But when we don't create that reunion, what happens? What happens is we end up getting the scraps of bread that we call Lechem Oni. And that is where we can see in the name of Hashem, there are two different ways of writing it. So as we know, about the last letter, like we said, is what? Hey. Hey is a very unique letter because He is actually built from two letters. One day, if we're going to get into the Palsufim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and how HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world and how He even created the letters, because even the as we know, everything was created from the letters, and everything there is letters, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu needed to create the letters first. So he essentially created the letters with the build of his face, and we can get to that one day, but that Hashem of the faces, and how each letter was created, what letter was created before what. He, on its own, is very unique. Why? Because He, on its own, is built from two different letters. Why is it built from two different letters? If you look at the He, you see the He is put with a Dalit, and then there's a bottom, there is a third piece, like a foot, that we connect, and that's what changes a Dalit to a He. A Dalit and a He is the same thing, the top piece at least. The difference is that one has a foot and one does not have a foot. Now, a, da a He can be built as a He from two different pieces. From what? There could be a He that has a Dalit and a Vav. There could be a He that has a Dalit and a Yud. Arizal teaches us that the He that is built from a Dalit and a Vav is what? It, that is a He that comes to a reality as a result of us, B'nai Israel spilling Shefa above, and that Shefa and that light that we spilled above created that reunion, and as a result, we were blessed, but blessed like kings. But a He, which is the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is built by a Yud and a Dalit, that is a hay that is considered to be bread of poor, where we didn't do anything to, reason, to, to deserve it, but uh, because our ancestors was Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and our Kaddush Baruch made a swear to Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov that he will take that zera, that, uh, that bloodline, and continue that bloodline of the Shamot on forward, then that's the reason why our Kaddush Baruch needs to bless us, needs to, to protect us, not because of the good that we did, but because it was a promise that was made and for no other reason. And even if we look about that, at the differences, you can see that the Vav, the Vav many times we, we compared the Vav to what? To the Torah. The Vav is like the hand, it connects, it connects between here and Ulamot Ha'elyonim. And we spoke about maybe a briefly, many times, uh, um, about how that Vav is really, we could compare it to the connection between this world and the next. So, Two forms of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. A form of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessing us because we did something good. And another form is us just being, deserving it. When Bnei Israel were in Egypt, the fact that they were protected by the Shekhinah, where it said that the Shekhinah galta imahem, 
that where it says that the Shekhinah, the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, came down even to the impurity of Egypt and blessed them and protect them, it was not as a result of them creating a, 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 a connection of light that they sent up light to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The reunion happened, then the Shekhinah blessed us. The fact that the Shekhinah and HaKadosh Baruch Hu protected Bnei Israel and redeemed Bnei Israel out of Egypt was for one simple reason. It was because HaKadosh Baruch Hu did a swear with Abraham. That's it. That the Shefa, that blessing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed them at the time when they were in Egypt, it's considered to be a blessing of Lechem Oni. A bread that was given to a person that did not deserve it. Bread that was given to a person who did not earn it, that did not work for it. Now, at that time, that when Bnei Israel were redeemed from that place, like we said, it was not a complete redemption. The concept of al is actually what? It's actually us trying to change that concept. How do we change from being receiving light, from uh, 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 like Bnei Israel received that light, which was considered to be like bread of the poor, to being light, which is deserved, so we need to feed the Yisod. Now, Botain, I gave an example, and I don't want whoever understands, understand, whoever doesn't understand, it's not meant to, for, for, for that person to understand. Yisod, what is the Yisod? So, we gave an example of a man and a woman. So, as we explained many times in the past, the different parts of a man that connects to different sefirot, the Yisod connects to two different body pieces. What does it attach to? The Yisod attaches to the tongue. And more popular and more uh, uh, widespread and more clear and more obvious, the Yisod attaches to the Berit. Now, do we need a, reuni a, 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 a reuniting between Akadosh Baruch Hu and between the Shekhinah in order for the Shekhinah to be full of blessing, in order to bless us? Now, the Yisod is a very unique sefirah. Why? Because the Yisod on its own does not have any shefa, does not have any unique attribute. What is the Yisod? The Yisod is a bridge. It's a pipeline. The Yisod takes light from all the seven sefirot, from all the mechila, the, the, the eight sefirot, which is above it, and condense them all in order to spill them all into the malchut. Because we know the Malchut holds all ten Sefirot inside. But all those ten Sefirot, all those ten attributes need to get to the Malchut. So how do they get to the Malchut? They reach the Malchut by going through the Yesod. So the Yesod on its own is what? It is empty. It is uh, not worthy. But it's us on our uh, 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 responsibility to send up that shefa, to change the way the Shekhinah treats us from being a Shekhinah of Pesach that was at the time of Itziat Mitzrayim of poor bread to shefa. How do we do so? We need to cause, this is another concept which is an entire world of teaching on its own, but to cause the drop from the brain, I'm not going to explain it too much, but we say the drop of shefa from the dat that goes down through the spine of the Sefirot and goes through the Yesod and into the Malchut, we need to cause that drop to be fed to the Yesod. So, how do we cause the Yesod to be full of Shefa in order to give to the Malchut? It's very simple. We said that the Yesod has two aspects. One which is the Berit, and the second one which is the tongue. When a person on Pesach speaks the Agadah and speaks the, uh, 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 all the miracles that we, we, we spoke about for the last week on the day of Pesach, Pesach, goes back to what we said about Arizal and why the Chag of Pesach is all dependent on the mouth. When a person speaks with his mouth and has the intention of creating that Ichud Elyon, of that reunion, reunion, creating that reunion between both those facts with speaking of the miracle that happened with Egypt, at that moment, what happens? At that moment, instead of going through the spine and down to the brit, it goes from the dat, which is the brain, straight to the tongue and outwards 
to feed the Yisod. So it's a little bit of a different way of, a, of, a, of going through it. Now, there's another concept that needs to be understood. The Zohar Kadosh says that the, the Yichud between Zeher and Pin and Nukva, which is a Kadosh Baruch Hu and the Shekhinah, the, the, the reunion of both of these aspects can only be done in Eretz Israel. It's something that we can only cause from Eretz Israel. So how can we, people that live in Chutz el cause that reunion when we are here? Even if we read the Haggadah, it's going to, we're going to read the, after the Alachmania, we mention what? We mention that Be'ezrat Hashem next year, we will be in Eretz Israel, free men, and bring that Echud. We say it in Aramaic. How can we do that here? So Ari, that's something like this. For all those who are in Chutz el for all those who live outside of Eretz Israel, how can they cause that Yichud? We can cause that Yichud of not necessarily having mind Eretz Israel and Akadush Baruch Hu, which will bring, which is essentially the Geula, bringing the spiritual and physical together. But we have in mind having the Eretz Israel Ailion, which is the Malchut, attached with the Zeher and Pin Ailion Akadush Baruch Hu on the spiritual level. So what we have in mind? We have in mind like this. We have in mind, first of all, through our dibur, through our speaking, we will give shefa to the Yesod, which is Akadosh Baruch Hu, to feed the Malchut, but not the Malchut of Eretz Israel physically, because we're not in Eretz Israel physically. To feed Eretz Israel Ha'elion, which is the Malchut Ha'elion. That is how we can essentially bring upon ourselves shefa and also put together those two aspects of the Yesod and the Malchut in order for Be'ezat Hashem to receive an abundance of blessing, not as blessing that was given to a poor person, but as blessing that was given to us because we deserve it and because we earned it. So how about that? Is there any question? I know this is a, a little bit of a, of a, a new type of, of learning Kabbalah, it's a really, little bit of a new type of a teaching. Is there any questions? A bit surreal. What is the... What is, what is Malchut Ha'elion? Malchut Ha'elion, so like we said, Malchut are two different things. They're, it's, it's more of, of, of a side. What does that mean? Malchut represents, first of all, the Shekhinah. So in the Kabbalah you have many different things that attach to many other different things, that attach to many other different things. What does that mean? So you have Malchut, which represents the Shekhinah, which also represents the woman aspect, which also represents the physical world, because they all attach one to the other, okay? And then you have the Zeher and Pin, which attaches to the Tiferet, which attaches to the Torah, which attaches to um, uh, the spirit, spiritual side, Chesed. So they all attach to each other, it's like, it's like a chain. But each loop attaches to many different loops. So it's not a loop that attaches only to two loops, it's a loop that attaches to maybe to three or four loops. So if you connect to one, you can branch out. Malchut represents, like we said, the Shekhinah. So we're not having in mind that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is necessarily going to bring the Geula by attaching the spiritual aspect and the physical aspect, but we're having in mind that the spiritual aspect, which is the Ze'er Anpin, which is the Yesod, will attach to the Malchut, which is the Shekhinah. So it's the Eretz Israel Ha'elion. Yesterday we mentioned that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to make a deal with the, the chief, the, the angel of the earth. So we said there, how, why angel of the earth? So there we explained, not the angel of the earth, which is actually the earth, Malchut. We explained that it's speaking about the Malchut of what? The Eretz Ha'elion. The Malchut, which we called Aretz. Same concept. It's Mishamayim. I, I, we spoke about that yesterday and about this uh, today. Now we're going to continue Be'ezrat Hashem with the concept of the Charoset and the Maror. And I think Abode is something that is very important. And I think it's something that we can all relate to and we can all um, um, uh, have in mind. You know Abode, we are all built from posit positivity and we're also built from negativity. So our job is to maximize our positivity and weaken and minimize the negativity and the darkness that exists in our life. 
the concept of the charoset is minimizing negativity and breaking the judgment at a much deeper level than we can possibly explain. So Abotai, we're going to continue with this line of this new type of, uh, of, of learning. We're a small group, we're not, it's not a big group. There's no need to, to, to we, we can go a little bit deeper. If we take Abotai, the word charoset, the, le- the word charoset, you can see that if you play around with the letters, the Zohar Kadu says, Charoset, it is the secret of what? It is the secret of Rut Sach. What is the concept of Rut Sach? That's something that we're going to learn about right now. So again, Charoset, how do you write Charoset? Charoset is Chet, Resh, Vav, Samech, Taf. You take those letters, Resh, Vav, Taf, Samech, Chet. Same letters, you put them around. Now, what is this concept of Rut Sach? So we spoke about about a moment ago, the concept of the Nukva, the, the, the Shekhinah, the female aspect, which is like our mother, and Akadosh Baruch Hu. The female aspect, which is the Malchut, which is the Nukva, like we just said, attaches to Givura. What is Givura? Givura is the judgment. You know, we're not going to get to that. I want to speak about something else, we're not going to do that. The female is the judgment. To both of these a- aspects, there are two different names of Akadosh Baruch Hu. There is Havaya, name of Hashem. Then there is Ad- Adonut, Ad- Ad- Adoshem. Same concept. Yud K Vav K represents Akadosh Baruch Hu, Zeir Pin, Torah, hidden name of Hashem. It's at a higher level. Chesed. Adonut, Adonut which is the name that we pronounce when we pray, Ado, represents what? Represents the physical, it's something that is revealed, it's something that you can read, it's something that attaches to more of the Givura, which Givura attaches to judgment, which judgment attaches to material. Up there, in Olam Ha'ilion, in the spiritual world, it is mostly built from Chesed, from kindness, from spirituality, with some mixes of Givura. Here, we're built with Givura, with some mixes of Chesed, of kindness, of spirituality. It's exactly opposite because both aspects split. This world took the Givura, the physical aspect. The up, higher world took the Chesed. When the world split, when the Yolamot Yamiya broke apart, that's when both these pieces, one went up and one went down. Adonut, which is the name of Hashem, which represents the Shekhinah, has two different aspects. Lea and Rachel. Now this is what we do actually when we do Tikkun Chatzot. There's actually two versions of Tikkun Chatzot. There's Tikkun Chatzot of Lea and Tikkun Chatzot of Rachel. Tikkun Chatzot of Rachel represents the kindness inside the judgment. So it represents the Chesed inside the Gevura, the face. Lea Represents what? Le'a represents the gvura, the judgment within the judgment. Meaning it's pure judgment. And we know the story of Le'a and Rachel. Rachel was the, the, the zivug of Yaakov. Le'a was the zivug of Rabbi, Rabbi Tzuriel. Esav. And as we know, we say, Ene Le'a Rakot. Le'a was, was very, very tough. Le'a was the one that was switched with Rachel. What's the concept of Rachel and Le'a in the first place? It's something we didn't explain. So he said that all the avot, something that I, I haven't spoken about yet, the avot, and especially the imaot, Akadosh Baruch Hu actually brought them to the world in those aspects of the Shekhinah. In the, in the sense that it's not necessarily, they're not just our foremothers, our matriarchs, um, in a way of they were married to our forefathers, but actually they act until today like our mothers, because their aspects are named after the Shekhinah. So the Shekhinah has different aspects, and the aspects attach to different uh, um, uh, matriarchs that exist uh, in Olamot Ha'ilun. Rachel represents the face, kindness. Lea represents the back, the judgment. If you take the word Adonut, and you do it demilui, you take it in a way of, of, of milui, you see that what's going to come out, 
Taf Resh Ain Alf. Tara is the Milui of Adonut. What does Milui mean? Milui is if you take the actual letters, there's a way of spelling the letters. What does that mean? So you have, for example, Yud K, Yud K, Vav K. Yud could be, could be spelled as, as an actual word. Meaning if you were to read Yud as a word, it's not one letter, it's multiple letters. So Yud, you can write it uh, Yud Vav Dalet, Yud. Hey, you can write it Hey Yud or Hey Hey. So there are different Miluim, and that's how you build different names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, by the different Miluim of Yud K Vav K. Another new concept we're going to maybe speak about um, in the future. If you take the word Tara, Taf, Resh, Ain, Aleph, which is the gematria of the name of Adonut, Adonut, that is actually what represents Le'a. Adonut, simplicity, represents Rachel. Tara represents Le'a. Rachel in Gematria is 65, not 65, the actual word of Rachel, but in the concept of the Adonut, because if we take the Adonut and you do it in Gematria, you come out to 65. Take out 65 from Taf, Resh, Ayn, Aleph, what, what is left? Rut. Resh, Vav, Taf. So what is Le'a? Le'a is Bebchinat Rut. So whenever it said Rut about the Shekhinah, it's referring to who? It's referring to Shekhinah, which is a form of judgment. But when you take out Rachel, when you take out what? When you take out the kindness that exists inside the judgment. Does that uh, make sense? I hope that, uh, that made sense to everyone. Now, on the day of Pesach, our goal is to sweeten the judgment. Our goal is to take the judgment, the negativity, and to minimize it at as least as possible. There's a Bota teaching in the Zohar Kadosh, we call it Melech Chai. We call it a live king. What is a live king? A live king, or a king that brings life, is a king that can come to judgment and bring sweetness to it. That there are two types of kings that exist in the world. There is a king that is a, a feeds judgment to judgment, and there is a king that takes a place of judgment and brings kindness into it and sweetens the judgment, and everybody loves the king who sweetens the judgment. What is the name of the Avakadosh Bahu that sweetened the judgment? Three names. I'm not going to mention out loud. I wrote them down, I'm going to spell them. Aleph, hey, yud, mm, hey, mm, to make a break between them. Hey, Vav, Yud, M, mm, Hey. And the third one, Aleph, Hey, Yud, M, mm, Hey. We said that? Three names. Those are actually three names that exist in one of the Kavanot when doing Tefillin. Because what is the concept of Tefillin? The concept of Tefillin is breaking the judgment and sweetening the judgment. If you take those three names and you put them in Gematria, in numerical value, what comes out? Sach. What is Sach? 68. So when we eat the charoset, and when we take the marot, and we dip it inside the charoset, so we're taking, the, according to the Kabbalah, the andive, and we dip it inside the charoset, we're essentially doing what? The Zohar Kadosh says, we are taking root, which represents Shekhinah, but with the extraction of kindness, which is Rachel, so it's just Leah, which is, which is root. It represents taking root, which is pure judgment and bringing sach. What is sach? Sach is those three names of Akadosh Baruch Hu, which are called a live king, Melech Chai. Which, what is a live king? A live king is a king which brings sweetness into a place of judgment. And what are we doing essentially at that time? The Zohar Akadosh says, when Arizal says, we are taking the judgment and we are sweetening the judgment that exists in the world in order to bring down a redemption, but in sweetness, in order to bring down a redemption that won't come by gvura, that won't come by uh, strength. And that about is something that is actually incredible. And that's why the Zohar Arizal says that a person needs to do the maror with actual bitter lettuce and knife. Why? Because if you're not going to taste the bitterness and you're not going to cr crush the bitterness with your teeth, because even in the teeth there is a concept. The teeth, there, you, a person, every Jew, 
has 32 teeth. 32. 32 is minyan of what? Live. Heart. Heart is kindness. When a person takes the teeth and he crushes the bitterness of the maor, and he tastes the bitterness, he essentially, in other words, re-imitates that concept of bringing sach into root or sweetening the judgment that exists in the world. So when we eat the, 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 the charoset and the maror together, what do we have to have in mind? What intention do we have to have? We have to, first of all, taste and focus on the bitterness, but with the kindness and the love of our teeth, we break it and we crush it to eliminate the judgment in the world and to bring more shefa of kindness and to bring a redemption that won't come at the form uh, of Gvura. Abotai, is there any questions? Uh, can you explain what the Tikkun Chatzot means? Tikkun Chatzot is when we bring a string of kindness into the judgment. What does that mean? It's when we, it's essentially, night time, it's all dark. When we do a Tikkun Chatzot, we're essentially sweetening, like we said, the judgment, which is the Yud Ke Vav Adonut, Nachon, because Adonut, like we said, is Rachen and Leah. So those are two concepts that we do. As in in Tikkun Chatzot, you have the Tikkun of Rachen and Tikkun Leah. So depending on some days, sometimes we only do Tikkun of Rachel, sometimes we only do Tikkun of Leah. So depending on this, like Rosh Chodesh, Chagim, that's already a, 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 an entire other teaching of its own. But Tikkun Chatzot, in other words, in simplicity, because we can do many shuram upon this, is the world is dark at that time. Judgment is ruling at the time of night time. And when you do the Tikkun of Chatzot, you're essentially taking that judgment and sweetening it and creating like a string of daylight to the point uh, that you are in. So essentially what you are doing is you're sweetening the judgment, which all go back to this. So essentially on Pesach, we're doing Tikkun Chatzot, but not Tikkun Chatzot, in other words, sweetening the judgment in a much deeper way with action, with material, with strength, we crush it with our teeth. When we do the kitu? No, no, um, no, 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 you make, fake, no, no, no. Please. The mixing to, 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 you're mixing too many things. Yeah. So we put three drops of water inside wine for, in order to break the judgment of the wine, because wine is din, wine is judgment. So there is actually a custom to put three drops of water inside the cup of Eliyahu. That is a custom that Arizal brings that is an option that we could do. Um, um, but it, it, it kind of goes back to the same thing, but a different way. We put the three drops to break the judgment. The content of Tikkun Chatzot is to crush and to transform the judgment into kindness. So it's essentially, like we said, we're creating that reunite, the reuniting of putting the red and the white together. What's the red and the white together? Zera and Pin, which represents man, and Nukva, which represents woman. Man, white, woman, red. Whoever understood, understood. HaKadosh Baruch created us and created our world from a copy of what exists up there. So if you want to understand what happens down here, to the smallest, if you want to understand what happens up there, focus on the smallest thing that exists down here, and to the smallest detail, smallest detail, it all attaches up there. We're a copy, we're a, we're a duplicate. We're, we're the last duplicate, actually. So whoever wants to understand what happens, we need to understand the, the main uh, aspects, what is Hashem, what is the Shekhinah, what is the man, what is the woman, and that's just in one aspect, but everything else in the world is the exact same thing. It's all the same copy in different shapes and sizes, but it's all the same concept um, amongst the entire creation. Mm -hmm. From the sun and the moon and from, to, to, to uh, like we said, to, to a man and woman. It's the same thing. It's all the same uh, concept. You're going to break it with chaoset, bringing the sach into root, in order to sweeten the judgment. So we all need to sweeten the judgment in our, in our own homes and our personal uh, level. So that's the main uh, custom. What's amazing is that even the older Moroccan, they do the custom without even knowing exactly what it is, but to its core. And even that's good, even that is good. We don't need to understand everything. We just need to act by Muna. So why would we say Tikkun Le'a if that is the case? Why would we say Tikkun Le'a? Because Tikkun Le'a is what's really necessary. Tikkun Le'a is, is sweetening the hardest of judgment. Because Le'a and Rachel, when they are together, which is Adonut, this is the word Adonut, is Elian and Rachel together. When you take out Rachel, which represents the kindness in the judgment, you're left with pure judgment. And that's Leah. That's Enei Leah Rakot. That's Leah's eyes are, are, are tearing. It's pure. It's Din, 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 Din. 
Lea was the zivug of Esav because Esav was din and she was din. And two din, one din of kind of, of kedusha and one din of tumah. The din of kedusha can overcome the din of tumah. Kindness not can, cannot always necessarily uh, uh, control and take over the strength of gvurav impurity. But gvurav kedusha could. Same concept. Geula latid lava will come with gvurav. The redemption will come to It's the Yitzchak Avinu will bring the, 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 the last redemption. Why? Because the last redemption, the world will be controlled by Gvura, by the left, by the material, by the, by, uh, by the evil. In order to overcome that evil, kindness will not work. Only, yeah, only Yitzchak, which is judgment, Gvura, can bring the Geula. And that's the concept of Yitzchak with um, the Shin. We spoke about that one time. Yitzchak with the Shin, is its hack of the of, of the time of the redemption, which will come in fire, esh, shin. It's the entire shul of itself. Uh, what is the actual definition of sach? Um, sach, words. Oh, medaber. Sach, yeah. speaking. And it's, it's not this. It's not definition. It's the gematria of the three names of the of the of the of the, 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 the melechai, of the king alive, which is essentially feeding kindness and sweetening judgment. It's the three names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu together. Those three names, when they come together, they're called a king which is full of life. Because he brings sweetness and he sweetens the judgment. brings life into to, to, to judgment. So, but Sach can also go back to like what we said. It can also go back to the concept of Pesach, the word the mouth speaks. It can also go concept that we break the judgment by doing what? By chewing on the bitterness with our teeth. What is the simplest way to sweeten the ju- uh, sweeten the judgment? We just said you, you, when you do the charoset, you that's on Pesach. But we can sweeten the judgment all the time. Sweetening the judgment throughout the year is a, it's our job. That's the concept of bringing lightness into the darkness. As we take something that's full of judgment and we bring sweetness into it. That's that's our life. Our entire life is that. Bring good into bad. Sweet, making the bad good. I think even this fuel is sweetening the judgment because I don't think I, I, I hope that this everybody understood. Because it's very, it's 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 aspects that are hard for our, our, our brain to grasp. It's very complicated for our brain to because it's not necessarily material aspects that we can uh, relate to or attach different things to. That's why it's it's for, it's a higher level of of, of, of limud that. Very soon, everyone, everyone are going to be at that understanding point, and we can do only this Bezat uh, Okay, this is a very... What is the question? Let me explain. explain. You, are, you are in the army, you are a Katin, you are very smart, you can, uh, you can read the question. Can you think that our last world, Hasia, is the last chain wheel uh, that moving all the machine of the... Of the uh, world, of the what? Of, yeah, yes, of yes. worlds. For exa- example, the time is different between the world, as you see by the punishment in hell. Let's say that it's one year, but there is different as we're duplicates of the higher realms, like the fire is sixty times stronger. Who asked that question, Dolev? Yes, I knew it. It needs to be Dolev. I, I, oh. Who asked that question? He wrote after not to ask it. After <laughs> it? After I already read it. Okay. Rabbi Dolev, I, I, it had to be you. I knew that it had to be you because you're the only one that asked that question. And you are very correct, Rabbi Dolev. Our world is the last part. It's the moving part. All the other worlds, they were existing. They still exist. But our world is what brought destruction. Our world is what needs to bring reparation. So the concept is, Akadosh Baruch created this, all these worlds above which of spirituality in order to attach and to make a reunion of all those different aspects. How did it happen when we do Torah and Mitzvot? That was the concept. Even when Akadosh Baruch wanted to uh, uh, create the world, his, uh, his thought was, to save those who need to be saving and to be tough for those who need to be tough with and to be, judge, to be uh, merciful for those who need mercy and to be uh, uh, judge, judgeful, full of judgment for those who need to be judged. So that's the whole concept. The whole, the whole world is a, a harmony of all those aspects together. Our world is the physical world. And being the physical world, being the world where HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave, brought this aspect of the left, but pure left. But not just pure left of uh, Gvura. 
It was pure love that attached freedom to it. And that's the difference. Because you had it's a chaim, it's a, it's a dat. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Nahon? Tree of life represented a higher world, which the tree of life is in, planted in the center of Gan Eden till today. The tree of knowledge represented freedom. Because freedom is built from two aspects. Freedom is built from knowledge and second of all, built from choice. If you want freedom, you need, you need a knowledge and choice together. If you don't have a knowledge and choice together, it's not freedom. So I can give an analogy, an example. A dog. Dog has choice but doesn't have knowledge, so he doesn't have freedom. Sometimes we have knowledge but we don't have choice, so we don't have freedom. So both of those things need to come together. In this world, HaKadosh Baruch Hu introduced the concept of choice and knowledge, which created freedom. Freedom also created a gap for building and also created a gap for destroying. So we destroy it and we need to repair it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not waiting for us forever. It feels like for us it's forever because it's 6,000 years. But for HaKadosh Baruch Hu it's one week. So he told Adam, you broke it, fix it, you have one week. One week I created the world, one week you destroyed all I built, fix it. Six days I created the world, six days you destroyed, and one day you destroyed all what I built, all, all what I fixed, all I built, fix it in one in uh, six days. And that's the concept. So yes, our world is um, uh, the last world, but also the world that we need to repair what was broken. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about why it will be the gvoa that our last redemption will come? It will come by fire, it says, but we don't understand what fire is. You know, but is something that I spoke about to a few people. I spoke to somebody uh, uh, last week, and I spoke to somebody. Uh, today, someone very close to me that I hope he is, is here with us. And that is the concept of the Geula. And a lot of people have different assumptions, different understandings on what the Geula is. So a lot of Rabbanim, when, you, when, when you are asked, how will the Geula come? Will the Geula come in a sweetness way, in a bad way, etc.? A lot of Rabbanim, we say, you know, there are different opinions. That is wrong. Whoever says that there are different opinions of how the Geula will come, it doesn't make sense. Now, even more so, the Zohar Kadosh brings 30 or 40 that I've accumulated in Baruch Hashem, uh, different places, or even more. I, I, I cannot promise that I went to every word of the Zohar Kadosh. Um, different uh, forms or different versions of redemption, of the last redemption. So the question is, how can we have 40 different opinions or 40 different contradictions in one book? It's just in the Zohar. Now, if you want to bring the Gemara, and then you want to bring the Nevim, and then you want to bring the, 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 the Tanakh, and you want to bring all those different uh, teachings to the table, you're going to have 200 maybe different versions of 200 different ways. Like one says it's going to come by a disease. Another one says it's going to come by fire. Another one says it's going to come by flood, flood of fire. One says it's going to be blood until, uh, until our knees. One says, oh, go, 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 it's going to be a war. Another one says, the go, 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 will not be a war. I'll take a second. Another one says, eh. All these different, how can you have 20 different opinions? So to say that there are different opinions, it's very wrong. It's incorrect. But what we could explain, there are different steps, different uh, stages in the Geula. So what's the concept? So it says in Zohar Kadosh, Akadosh Baruch Hu, will come in different steps, in different, uh, uh, um, um, uh, we said steps, no, not steps, we said, um, Stages. In the beginning, it'll come easy. Try waking us up by little pushes. And those little pushes will get stronger and stronger and stronger as long as we don't wake up from them. Meaning, if we don't wake up from the small push, what is Hashem, what is Hashem going to have to do? He's going to have to give us a bigger push. And if we don't wake up from the bigger push, He's going to have to give us even a bigger push. So I'll give an example. It says in the Zohar Kadush that what is a version or a step, not a version, a step or a stage of the redemption? Zohar says Ishmael will create rivers of blood, that the entire world will shake from the rivers of blood that Ishmael will create, and that will cause us to do Teshuvah, and that will cause us to bring the redemption. Realize, Abotai, that two years ago, what was the biggest fear that existed in the world? Abit Soriel, you are sorry. What's the biggest fear that exists in the world two, two years ago? Where was it coming from? Two years ago, it was, a big, it was the most talked about fear. Ay, 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 ay. We spoke about what? 
Two years ago, it was all about Dash, Isis, Dash, Isis, Dash. It was the Ishmael creating rivers of blood. They would, and they were doing it for the whole world to see. They were making videos, they were taking out all these different things for us to, for the whole world to see. The whole world shook from it. But did we change? Did we do Teshuvah? No, we did not do Teshuvah. So Hashem stopped that and now He brought us a different uh, stage. Or what other rabbis would call it a different version. It's not a different version. It's a different stage. And it's a sickness. The sickness is another another place in the Zohar, where it says that the Geula, HaKadosh Baruch brings us back the Tshuva through giving a sickness a fear. Will this work? I don't know. If this is not going to work, HaKadosh Baruch is going to have to bring in a different version for us to wake up. Now, unfortunately, it's something that I, I never planned on saying, and maybe sometimes it's good to wake people up. The last version, version, like we said, but really the last step or the last stage that if we don't do Teshuvah by any push or by any pinch, is very tough. That could be, in a, it could be coming in the future, but the world is going there. It's clear that the world is going there. If you tell me now, the way the world is set up now, it will last another 50 years, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Nothing makes sense. Too many, too many aspects are wrong. Too many, everything is unbalanced. The last version, the last step, the last stage, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has no more choice. We don't wake up from any of the pushes and he needs to give us the, the final push, which I never expected ever saying this. But since the HaKadosh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will clean the entire world. No more living man will exist and only the Tzadikim will wake up at Tchat HaMitim. So the Geula could be in different stages. The Geula can be now, it could have been two years ago. It could be in two years. But we need to wake up in order for Bezat Hashem for it to be the last uh, pinch that we get and we need to take into action. It's not just being fearful, it's changing from this pinch of fear.